season six is here and we got to rank all these legends in this video we got the apex legends season six tier list let's do it god this master's nasty welcome back warriors to another apex legends video today we're going to be ranking all the legends in season six from worst to best now as you guys know quick disclaimer as this is just my opinion along with the criteria that i'm about to describe these please you know leave your comments and opinions you know positive down in the comment section you know if your legend doesn't make where you think he is or he should be this based on a pro playing him all this stuff no just leave it out of it this is purely based on the three criteria that i'm going to provide which i have in a previous tier list video as well as my opinion so let's get right into it so the following criteria we've used before guys it is one their loadout so their overall abilities in apex legends their tactical passives and their ultimates next up is their team compatibility how well these legends mesh with other legends in the game as well as like all of their nerfs and buffs that they got like how well do these legends play with each other and then last but not least is map adaptability how well these legends survive on each map king's canyon as well as world's edge so with that criteria as well as my opinion guys let's break down the list all right starting in the d tier in dead last is your boy mirage okay he's been at the bottom of the list almost every season for me and not much is changing with him okay now they did give him slight buffs this past season in season five and made his overall we rework that much better uh but overall with the criteria listed before guys like mirage just does not provide enough team compatibility in apex legends on any level now in public games of course you can use any legend you want which i'll state on the record but mirage just doesn't hold anything now his passive ability which allows him to go invisible when he's resing a teammate as well as you know doing a respawn hitting the hitting the respawn beacon to res your team in are probably the best features about him but they kind of nerfed that already they made it to where it's really loud and then you have the little shine off of his his glass things on his body so overall mirage just does not cut it man and he will continue probably to be at the bottom of the barrel for me in apex legends next up is the c tier guys where we have octane loba and the brand new season six legend rampart now let's start with loba they gave her some quality of life enhancements or improvements this past season but overall she just had a huge effect on the community from a cosmetic standpoint loba's thick people but otherwise her tactical ability is really subpar where you would rather have wraith in its place um her ultimate ability is almost useless when you compare it to um you know lifeline or even gibby so overall loba just has not hit the apex scene as well as we thought that she would i i honestly thought and i even said it in a video that she would give wraith a run for her money but boy was i completely wrong about that now octane octane has got a huge buff man they buffed his speed from 30 to 40 percent and they allowed his jump pad to be used almost non-stop so they're literally everywhere i've seen it in public lobbies where all you see is jump pads everywhere now with that said octane just still remains the most fun the funnest the most fun funnest character in all of apex in my opinion i think he is just a super fun legend other than that he really doesn't provide a too much value when it comes to team compatibility his map about adaptability is probably the best feature about him with the jump pads but overall octane is just a fun legend man he he really just doesn't do a whole lot you'd rather use somebody else like pathfinder or even wraith when it comes to mobility last on the list in the c tier guys is the new legend rampart now to me when i first saw her and her abilities i thought rampart was going to be a super dope legend i thought defensively her matched up with caustic and you know watson or even i guess you could use bang or maybe some of these other defensive legends if you really wanted to i thought that she would be a, like a top tier legend but i think confidently she really hasn't her you know her little shields that are walls that she puts up can get killed really easy and fast as you're setting them up which i have in my rampart video which i'll list in the card above but her her now her mini gun her ultimate is really good but then again you're stationary and once that shield drops from the wall i mean you're it's so hard to not take a bunch of damage or get dropped before you know she goes down so overall i think rampart's really cool i think the best feature about her is her passive ability which allows her to give extra ammo and stuff when you're using lmgs 
in all that. So Rampart, although it has been, you know, not necessarily hated from the community, but not necessarily received the the, the greatest praise uh, in season six. I, overall, I think she's a pretty decent legend, and I hope that they make some better improvements for her going forward. Now, next up is the B tier, guys. Now, this is tricky. I think this season has been really even, but we got Watson, Pathfinder, and my girl, Bang. Okay, this season has really shaped up the meta. I think there's so many good legends that you can use, but when we're ranking them in a tier list, we really got to get the, to the details about which is better. So, let's start with Pathfinder. Poor Pathfinder, guys. If you're a Pathfinder main, I feel really bad for you guys. He got the biggest nerf I think I've seen in any character in Apex Legends in six seasons. And I've been playing since the start of the game, okay? I've been pred every season except for uh, one season. So this game has been crazy, and I think the biggest nerf to him was insane. They nerfed his grapple down to where it's it's used so selective compared to just being able to use it almost nonstop, even with the gold helm. It really sucks. And now this season, they nerfed him even more by buffing the recon class so with bloodhound as well as crypto hitting those beacons and even resing people are just better you'd rather have one of them instead of pathfinder now with that said pathfinder is still a good legend okay with his relatively small hitbox as well as his abilities i still think he can he's very viable when it comes to uh team play next up we have watson Watson, my girl, I played her all through Season 3 and Season 4. I absolutely love Watson. Her complete rework was awesome. I don't think she's super overpowered, and I don't think she's going to be underused. She's still highly used in the competitive format, and that's a different video that we can do. But Watson, along with her pylons and her fences, still remains one of the best legends overall in the game. Now, you ask, why do I put her in the D tier? I just think that with the rework of Crypto is the biggest reason that she's dropped from the A tier to B tier. And we'll get to him later in this video. But her, her three pylons that only last, you know, uh, they're not permanent. They last 60 seconds or 120 seconds or whatever it is now. But her fences are still really, really good. And the fact that her shields, you know, can continue to replenish everybody with that pylon just makes her a really good legend. Last in the B category is Bangalore, my girl, the most balanced legend in the game. She really hasn't changed much. They've given her a few quality of life enhancements that, you know, this past season and season five. But overall, she really hasn't changed a whole lot. Going into season six, we thought we were going to get a big buff for her. And, uh, so, you know, even myself speculated that she was going to get an heirloom. But it didn't happen. Um, we're still waiting on the heirloom for this season. But overall, Bang still remains the best overall balanced legend and easy legend to learn if you're new to the game her abilities uh with double time and smoke just provide so much versatility to your team if you decide to use her her ultimate although it's slow still stuns and deals a crap ton of damage guys is the perfect reposition ultimate in the game so overall bang it still remains in the b tier next up is the a tier guys we got gibby revenant lifeline and crypto now i feel like these last two categories i'm going to get a lot of hate for down in the comments but still these legends i think have made it so much more balanced so first let's start with gibby gibby apex is big man he still had a few uh, small changes guys his ultimate was reduced to 12 seconds or his shield was reduced to 12 seconds his ultimate was reduced to 16 so overall gibby still remains a powerhouse in the game his dome res is still that much better except for lifelines rework which we're going to talk about in just a second but his dome res and his versatility in the game and is still really good and his ultimate overall is one of the best on every level pubs scrims and especially at the pro level he's still a highly used legend in the game and now with the ttk and the lowering of the shields in apex gibby having that extra arm shield just makes him that much more of a powerhouse Next up, we got Revenant, probably the biggest controversial legend this season and as well as the back half of last, se last season. His, the Rev meta, we all hate. I did a whole video on how much we hate this meta. Revenant got a huge rework and it pumped up his power in this game to a level that we did not think that was going to happen. Everybody uses the Rev push the Rev Ultimate along with Wraith and Crypto. But this season, they gave it a bit of a nerf. So you can't go through the the, race, the Wraith portal for two seconds. 
um, you know, they reduce the range just a little bit. Um, you take damage and it slows you uh, at, for Crypto's ultimate. So they, they've made small strides at nerfing this meta and this kind of push, this ultimate push. But even then, if you even know about it, you still have to be really good to use it and do it right. So Revenant, big, big bonus. He got a huge buff this past season. So he's going to be in the A tier for a while until he gets a nerf. Next up is Lifeline, guys. Her rework this season was absolutely bonkers. Okay, the biggest thing is that she lost her heal drone, or not necessarily her heal drone, but her fast heal, in in replacement for a res where she can continue to fight. For the longest time, Lifeline just didn't really get any buffs or nerfs, but now they've made her one of the most, in my opinion, one of, an OP legend. Okay, you can res somebody and continue to fight, which is just insane. Now, with that said, if you get around her shield, you can shoot the drone or you can just shoot the character that's being res re relatively quickly and just end that. But overall, if she protects them well while continuing to fight, her res is still really fast and she still has the heal drone. So being able to heal consistently, you know, makes her still a very powerful legend. Her supply um, drone or supply drop gives bonus shields and heals as well as a lot of high quality purple items. So lifeline to me will be probably in the a tier for a really really long time last but not least in the a tier is crypto boy did he get a buff this season crypto mains out there are loving it he used to be in the c tier for me for the longest time he just did, wasn't received well and having to go in and out of his drone for so long and be so away from the fight just put crypto mains at such a disadvantage but boy this season respawn really reworked him his drone, now you can almost get in and out instantly. His, his ultimate on his drone not only slows your teammates, which is the negative, but on the positive side, it slows and destroys shields uh, for enemy opponents. But the biggest thing is that it gets rid of all of Watson's fences and her ultimate pylons, as well as Caustic's traps. This is huge. Cryptomains are allowed to almost push every single fight in the game. Any team that's held up in a building or a house whatever the case is crypto can break all those defenses and your team can push in there for easy kills now the other thing that i love about crypto is he's the part of that recon class we talked about earlier his drone can not only pick up your teammates banners but he can res them instantly he can take them to the respawn beacon and res them as well as hitting a beacon for knowing those exact locations guys his his beacon or hitting the beacon with crypto is instant it's instant you don't have to go through the animation like you do with pathfinder and bloodhound he just can go hit it center and boom you know where the next zone is which is huge for when you're trying to set up so crypto got a huge buff this season guys i think he's a very viable legend even on the pro level i i assume that tsm is probably still going to be using him but crypto will be around for a while last but not least guys is the s tier we got wraith bloodhound and caustic now some of you might be asking why and how did caustic and bloodhound get into the s tier when they were so far down for the past few seasons but they got incredible buffs these past couple seasons guys but let's start with wraith wraith in my opinion is still the best overall legend in apex she has been since season one her offensive capabilities and repositioning with her portal make her insane to use she's used on every single team almost every single pro team if you don't have a wraith on your team you're at a big disadvantage in almost any circumstance but her rework has made her more of a reposition legend and a less offensive legend uh, with her Q or her L1 or right bumper, whatever you want, whatever platform that you're on. Her port, you know, her phasing takes a little bit longer, but it's got some huge buffs when you're actually in it. The increased speed at 30% as long as being able to use it for four seconds. Now her portal, although it uh, is still a really good reposition tool, it hasn't changed too much. But now you could be using her portal and then go into your queue with instant, just how her queue used to be as opposed to her rework. Wraith overall with the smallest hitbox is still the best legend in the game, guys. You already know that. I don't have to talk too much more about Wraith. So let's get into the other two S-Class legends for me in Season 6, at least so far. First up is Caustics. Boy, man, have I loved Caustics since his rework. The ability to use his gas and not have it slow down your teammates has made the game much more fun. It's a little bit more balanced. It's It gives more variety with character use. But 
that not being able to slow down your teammates but also slow down the enemy has just changed the way Apex has played, at least on a defensive front. Now, with this said, it still does make your vision impaired for your teammates, but if you're a Caustic main, then you're still able to see everybody just like normal. So Caustic's rework has made him absolutely incredible to use. He can hold down buildings really, really well. He can also be using his gas offensively with his ultimate, which deals so much damage. So with that big buff to his uh, defense with the Fortify, Caustic is a powerhouse in Apex Legends. I just hope to see him more in the pro scene. Um, he wasn't used too much, but I think that he might be used some more with how fast um, the TTK is in this game. Having that extra 4 to 5 defense and just how how fast you kill people, his gas makes it a little easier to finish off those, uh, those teams. Last but not least, in my favorite legend so far this season, and I've been using him nonstop and ranked, is Bloodhound. Bloodhound got two huge buffs this past season. Past two seasons, excuse me. Got two huge buffs, guys. Big buffs to her tactical, being able to go farther. Although it is only like a 45 degree cone going forward wherever you're looking. But it goes farther. It lasts longer, about three seconds, four seconds to identify where enemies are. And then her ultimate makes her incredible. Okay, it lasts for a minute. The more downs you get, the longer it lasts. And then you can almost yeah, use her say, her uh, L1, her Q, nonstop. It's like a 10-second cooldown when you're in the ultimate. And, and on top of that, what makes it even more crazy is you have a huge speed boost in her ultimate. Huge speed boost. Now, with that said, I, the one thing I don't like about her ultimate, guys, is that when you're in it, you have a huge speed boost as far as movement, but it's also a huge speed boost when you're aiming it's almost oh, like you go up crack. one tick in your aim setting so like i'm a 5-3 or a 5-4 player now i'm like it goes to like 6-5 it just feels that way i could just be that could just be me guys but let me know down in the comments if you have that same thing if you're a bloodhound man but guys bloodhound is a must use legend you see it all over ranked especially bloodhound is the top of the line legend i hope to continue having fun playing her so we'll see what what happens in split two of season six all right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys do like the tier list for season six. This is at least the tier list for split one. Let me know down in the comments what do you guys think about the list. And please, again, guys, keep the comments positive. If you have some actual real criticism, please let me know. Just don't hit the comment section with, oh, well, I like Mirage and I play Mirage. There's no way he's a dear D tier legend. Or, no, I, I play, I, I saw I saw this, you know, pro use uh octane he's definitely a, an s tier legend okay don't hit the comment section with all that guys give me back no, some no, real no, no, no. criticism based on your opinions along with the criteria that's why i have the criteria in place guys so it makes it a little bit easier for me to do my tier list now if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to drop that like as it does help me out guys if you're new here please subscribe and join the warriors so you guys don't miss out on all the tips and tricks to improve your apex legends gameplay as well as cool tier lists like this guys and as for me warlock as always guys i'll catch you next in the next one peace